Roadside emergencies are never planned, but with the proper tools, we can make sure that they are just inconveniences instead of absolute roadblocks. Hey there, welcome to RV Gear and Farm. I'm Joshua, and today we're gonna to be doing an after action report on three tire issues in three days. So we recently had three travel days in a row, and as part of my everyday checklist, check the tire pressure, check the temperature, and check the tread on all of the tires of our tow vehicle and of our travel trailer. Unfortunately, about halfway through our first travel day, about three or four o'clock in the afternoon in starting to be rush hour traffic, the truck started shaking at about 65 miles an hour. The seat started rumbling, all of a sudden, kaboom! Now, I don't know what exactly caused this to happen because the tread actually dislodged from the rest of the wheel and became a mace and actually destroyed part of the bed the wheel well, and unfortunately is gonna have to take some body work to fix. Fortunately, we were in the right-hand lane and were able to pull over and get onto the shoulder. The second issue was late the next evening, about nine o'clock at night, it was dark and raining and we blew a tire on the travel trailer. And the third issue was coming into our final destination on that third really long travel day. All of a sudden, the TPMS system went off, but it didn't go off like the first two had done of, of letting us know that there was no pressure in the tire. It dropped about 30 degrees, had a rapid leak, and then stopped and held about 30 PSI lower than what it was set at. So we pulled over and found out that the valve stem had split. And as the wheel was going around, the centrifugal force on that valve stem would pull open and release some air pressure. And so we ended up having to leapfrog every exit, adding more air to that tire to make it to our final destination. It's just not something that's enjoyable in any way, shape or form. And I really hope that you don't have to experience it. But if you do, here's some of the gear that made it a non-event and something we were able to tackle by ourselves in about half an hour, 45 minutes of time. So the very first thing you do is put your four ways on, put your hazards on and then let people know that there is an emergency, there is something going on and to give you some space. I also really like having these reflective belts or a reflective vest. They look super goofy, but they are absolutely eye-catching. And the reflective part of it definitely helped in the dark and the rain when visibility was already reduced. Whenever you're jacking up a truck or a trailer, make sure you grab your wheel chocks and just chalk the vehicle. The last thing you wanna do is be lifting something up high enough to change a tire and having the entire vehicle or the RV roll on you. So making sure that you chalk a tire to keep the entire setup stable as you're messing around changing a tire or fixing a flat is absolutely crucial and one of the very first things you should do before you touch anything. So the first situation where we had the rear driver's side tire on the truck blow, the tread actually separated from the tire, became a mace, and just destroyed the entire wheel well, part of the bed, the fuel filler, and the entire truck was sitting down on the wheel. So it was pretty darn low. The axle was really low, so low that my hydraulic bottle jack itself could not fit under there as close to the wheel as what I wanted to. Now, if all you have is the lug wrench that came with your vehicle, those are adequate, but sometimes they're just, they're too short. And so a piece of pipe that's gonna be able to fit over the end of that, very similar to over this breaker bar, can really give you that extra leverage that you need sometimes to break those loose. And while they're adequate, I really find that I prefer to get deep sockets the size of my truck and my travel trailer to be able to use those with a dedicated half inch breaker bar and torque wrench. One thing a lot of people don't realize is that their tow vehicle may have one lug nut size. The wheels on their trailer or towable might have another lug nut size, and then the nut holding the spare tire on could be a third lug nut size. So this is definitely something you wanna check before you're going out, is making sure that you've got all the correct socket sizes for all the nuts that you would have to use when changing a tire. So before I jacked anything up, we made sure that I broke the lug nuts on the truck loose, got the correct socket size and the breaker bar and broke the tension on all those lug nuts before I lifted that axle up so that the ground could give resistance in order to break those nuts loose. So what I actually ended up doing is getting the jack from the truck along with the bottle jack and kind of piggybacking them because I needed to get it high enough that the amount of lift that the hydraulic jack has was not high enough to get the entire rear axle off the ground high enough to put the spare on. So I ended up having to use the bottle jack and the jack from the truck along with these Lynx levelers. These things are super handy. We use them all the time on the trailer to support the stabilizer jacks. What I really like them is that they're just so modular. You can go up in one inch increments. Those accompanied with a just marine grade two by four that's the same size, really proved helpful and be able to stack that, put the jack on it, then take it down, put the other jack and kind of leapfrog so that and ultimately we got that axle high enough to be able to put the spare on there. The other thing that we did is we used these underneath the tongue jack of the RV 
build it up as high as it would go so that we didn't have to waste time waiting for that tongue jack to come down to lift the weight off of the truck. Unfortunately, the tread was wrapped around the actual axle and the brake components. Fortunately, nothing on the brakes was destroyed or damaged. However, it was tight around there and kind of wedged in. Another thing that's gonna be super duper handy is just having a pair of leather gloves or work gloves that you can put on to protect your hands. It allows you to work a little bit faster because you're not worried about getting your hand caught on all of those metal wires that are in this now exploded tire. And so we've got the axle up, the lug nuts loose. I ended up grabbing the drill at that point and a socket adapter, put that on here, put my socket on. That way I could undo the sockets out of the wheel super duper fast. It was a lot faster than hand unthreading those nuts. And then I could also use that to start the nuts when we've got the spare tire put on. Once we got that spare tire put on, again, you're not going to use an impact driver or a drill to tighten those, you're gonna wanna have a torque wrench. And I find having this in my kit and in the truck has proven helpful both on the RV and the truck multiple times. A word of note though, you're not going to want to use your torque wrench to break the nuts loose off of your wheels. That's why you're gonna have the breaker bar because you can mess up the mechanism inside here, prying against it. So you're gonna wanna have a breaker bar to be able to take those nuts off and break them loose. Now, once we had that spare tire on, we had to make sure that we had enough air pressure in the spare tire to be able to drive down the road. I found that having a dedicated tire pressure reader, one that's double A battery powered, is beneficial and really easy way to check. Having a portable inflator or 12 volt inflator for your tires, would have been absolutely crucial because if you have a spare tire there, but it's flat, it does you no good. And I keep this 12 volt powered inflator in the truck at all times. However, this 18 volt battery powered inflator, I can set the exact pressure that I want, hit the button and it will inflate to that pressure and then stop. This is both a 12 volt and a battery powered option. I really, really enjoy this. It's loud. However, it's a lot handier and a lot easier to run around to all eight tires on the rig when we're towing to be able to top up versus pulling out the cord and going from battery to battery, tire to tire with this one. Another thing that was super handy was having a tarp. I was able to lay it down on the gravel and when I had to crawl under to get the jacks up under the axle, the tarp was super handy just to keep my clothes from getting covered in road grime and dirt. And then it ultimately ended up being beneficial because the tread was actually hanging off of the tire. And so if I had put that tire back where the spare tire was, that tread would have been just dragging. So I ended up wrapping it in the tarp and then setting it in the RV because at that point we had everything for travel day in the bed of the truck and there was no room to put another truck tire in the bed of the truck. And so the second tire issue was at night, about nine o'clock, it was raining, it was dark. And I don't know exactly what happened with that tire if we hit something in the road, but all of a sudden I heard boom. And being it was the second day and the second issue, I knew that we had a tire blow. I just didn't know what it was. And then, you know, that half a second later, the TPMS system goes beep, 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 beep. It was the front driver's side trailer tire. Now, I don't know if we hit something in the road. Again, it was raining, it was dark, visibility was reduced. However, thankfully, this was not a complete blowout. The sidewall of the tire just had a slit in it as though it had popped or something had sliced it in the road. And thankfully, there was no damage done to the RV. I've had a previous blowout on a pop-up trailer that absolutely became a mace and destroyed the entire inside of the pop-up trailer. Thankfully, this time, it was only the tire that got damaged, which also meant it was a really easy and simple swap with the correct tools. Having a headlamp that was easily accessible in the cab of the truck really helped in order to gather all the necessary supplies that we were gonna need in order to change the tires. So with the trailer this time, it was very similar to the truck in that the axle was very low to the ground because you've got the dip of the shoulder that also when you've got a driver's side blowout, you're on the high side, but that also means that the weight is lower. And so what I ended up doing to be able to get the bottle jack underneath the axle is I grabbed my ramp levelers and I put those ramp levelers underneath the second axle and drove up on that as high as it would go. And that allowed the suspension of the trailer to bring that first axle up high enough that then I could then put that bottle jack underneath the axle and then jack it up high enough to get that tire off and put the other tire on. Making sure you have all the tools necessary to take off your tire. We've got these plastic center caps that snap onto the lug nuts of the trailer tire. Having this little pick to be able to reach in there and grab it and pull it off is so much easier than trying to literally manhandle it off or grab a screwdriver. So having the right tools for your setup really makes changing a tire on the side of the road a lot less stressful, a lot quicker and therefore safer. I can't stress enough knowing temperatures of your setup. 
This infrared thermometer I keep in the glove box of the truck and at rest stops, check the hubs of the trailers, check the brakes of the truck, just getting general idea of what your rig runs and how it runs to know, hey, did that tire blow out because I am having a bearing issue? When I went around and I checked the temperature on all four of the hubs of the trailer, they were all the same temperature. So that leads me to indicate that there was not a bearing issue that caused the tire to explode. But you wouldn't know that unless you had a way to read those temperatures. And so an infrared thermometer is super duper handy. I really like the ones that are AA battery powered instead of nine volt. Again, AA, AA, having AA's on a lot of the things within the rig, that standardized battery size, to me is a lot easier and a lot faster than dealing with nine volt batteries. Now, thankfully, all of these tire issues for me were an inconvenience. They did not stop our travels. It put us about an hour behind in our destination arrival time, but it was because I had all of the proper gear and we had done this before. We knew what we needed, we knew where we needed it, and it was all accessible. If we had all of this stuff at the front of the truck bed and then all of our other stuff piled on it for the travel day, we would have had to unload all that stuff in the rain or on the side of the road during rush hour traffic in order to get to the parts we needed. So having these things accessible in a place on the RV or the tow vehicle where you can get to them in the event of an emergency is highly recommended and really just proper planning. Now, thankfully it was a non-issue that we were able to take care of easily and quickly and between me and my wife able to get things done expediently and I was physically able to do that. However, I understand that not everyone is. And so making sure that you have proper roadside assistance for the type of vehicle that you're traveling in is absolutely crucial. Making sure that the roadside assistance that you have covers your RV. That if you have an issue where the tow vehicle is stranded, that they will also take care of the trailer and the towable because your regular roadside assistance will not necessarily cover trailer breakdowns or breakdowns that'll, that are happening when you're towing a trailer. So make sure that you've got the correct coverage for what you're towing and what you're driving and knowing that that is a service that you can use and that you are not alone should there be a roadside emergency. So as you can see, between those scenarios, we had afternoon, broad daylight, but in traffic. We had late night, in the rain, in the dark, but we are on an exit ramp. And so if I had to choose which one of those scenarios I would have a, another tire issue in the future, without a doubt, I'd rather be in the dark, in the rain, and on an exit ramp than being in broad daylight on the shoulder, but with traffic. Traffic is absolutely, people just don't see you on the side of the road. And maybe not that they don't see you, but they just don't see you in time. And even if they do move over to the inside lane, to the left-hand lane and give you a full lane's worth of space, a semi-truck going 65 miles an hour, just the amount of air that just blown out of the way as those pass you, it's just not something that's enjoyable in any way, shape or form. And I really hope that you don't have to experience it. All right, so what didn't I have? What was I left wanting? Well, I really wish that we had had a few more ways to let other drivers know that we were having an issue. We didn't have any cones, we didn't have any triangles, flares, LED strobe lights. And so there really was, outside of our four-way flashers, our, our hazard lights, no way to let other vehicles know that we were having an issue. The reflective belts and the bright orange or yellow vests are absolutely helpful and really good at making sure that your body is seen. You know, if you have a second person helping you, have them go 50 to 100 feet behind the vehicle and start waving their arms, getting people to slow down and realize that, hey, something's happened here. Please move over and give us some space. And so adding those type of visual keys to be able to set out and let people know, hey, we've got something going on here. Please move over, give us some space, are something that we're adding to our kit and incorporating into our travel tool gear. And so I'm curious to know, do you carry flares? Do you carry LED lights? Do you carry cones or triangles? Which ways do you prefer? Unfortunately, we don't have any control over when these roadside emergencies happen. We can do our due diligence to make sure that we have adequate tread in our tires, that we're checking the tire dates of manufacturer and doing all of those things necessary to make sure that our tow vehicle and our towable or trailer is in proper working order. But ultimately accidents happen and we have to make sure that we can deal with those incidents when they happen. And so after those two days of tire issues, one on the truck, one on the trailer, we're pulling into our final destination and all of a sudden, psst, the tire pressure monitor goes off, beep, 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 beep. But it doesn't drop like it did the first two times. It drops about 30 PSI and then stops. Come to find out that the valve stem had split, right? Where the valve stem attaches to the rim of the tire. Now we've got the TPMS sensors on those valve stems and they were rubber valve stems. We've traveled over 20,000 miles with it that way and so maybe it was just time for them to wear out. However, when I got the tires replaced on the trailer, I made sure to have them put metal valve stems in. They're a lot more sturdy, and they'll definitely take the small weight of those added monitor caps better than the rubber versions. And we'll, we'll move a little less that with the centrifugal force of the rotating wheel, 
and not swing out as much. I pulled that cap off to lessen the amount of swing that that valve stem was feeling as we were going down the road, slowed down and ended up having to go from exit to exit, each time stopping to add more air into that tire to make it to our final destination. And you may ask, well, why didn't you just stop and change that with the spare tire off of the trailer? Well, remember the previous night at 9 p.m., we were in the rain changing the spare onto the blown tire of the trailer. So the tire that was on our spare tire carrier of the trailer was that blown tire. We were close enough to our destination and instead of backtracking an hour to get to the tire shop to replace that spare tire, we decided to go forward. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for us because we had this valve stem issue. However, that's just a decision you have to make when you've used your spare tire is how quickly do you get that replaced? Obviously, the sooner the better. And when we had it blow on the truck, we got those replaced the same day. 9 p.m. the second day, we decided not to do that backtrack of an hour, but instead press forward. It's just a judgment call at that point, and ultimately it's something you have to consider. And that's why I like buying my tires from a nationwide service center, because it doesn't matter where in the country we are, we can go get these tires replaced, warranty serviced, rotated, and just having the, the convenience of that nationwide warranty coverage. However, it did mean that we chose, instead of going backwards an hour to get that trailer tire replaced, that we decided to go forward, and ultimately could have left us stranded. We could have had to use our roadside assistance or drop the trailer to then go to pick up a new tire. It worked out for us, but something we need to be thinking about of like, if this happens, then what else happens? And the, the consequences of those actions. And there is no correct answer, no right way or wrong way to do it, except for the wrong way being not have thought about that. All right, so I'm curious to know what you keep in your emergency roadside kit that I didn't talk about here in my kit. What things have you used in the past that made the process faster, easier, and safer? Three tire issues in three days, let you know what gear works for us, what gear I'm going to be adding to our kit. If you found any value in this, please consider subscribing to the channel. And hopefully after having thought through these mental situations and gathered your tools and your gear, I won't see you on the side of the road, but rather at the campfire at the campground. Happy trails.